Okay, I'm trying this again, guys. Um, this is our y'all's recording on nursing care of the muscle skeletal system with arthritis. I put your PowerPoint on Blackboard. I hope it will help. Okay, come on. Okay, it's about the rheumatic diseases primarily affect the body joints, the tendons, ligaments, the muscles, and the bones. There were several slides um, I left on here of the rheumatoid arthritis, but um, you won't need them all this time, but you might need them later. Um, the disease, these diseases are marked by inflammation, pain, and loss of function. Arthritis involves the inflammation of a joint or joints. Most forms affect women more than men. Osteoarthritis is the most common chronic condition of the joints. Rheumatoid is the chronic systemic autoimmune disease, inflammation of the connective tissue in the synovial joints. Uh, the strongest evidence for genetic influence is the role of HLA. The exact cause is unknown. It results from genetics and environmental triggers. Without adequate treatment, 60% can develop a, a marked functional impairment within 20 years. Uh, they have a, they need, they can, they need to try to move as much as they can, as long as they can. One of our friends has this and we try to keep her moving. Her daughter's a physical therapist, but she doesn't live uh, real close to her mom, but she does come and see her and tries to keep her moving. Um, these are the explanations that go with these pictures right here about pictures of how they lose the bone density and the joint deformity and the cartilage and the swelling. If untreated, this disease goes through the four stages of early, um, moderate, severe, and end stage. Specific joint involvement is marked by pain, stiffness, limited motion, um, the onset of it is insidious. Some people re, um, report a stressful event brought it on. And research has been able really to correlate um, certain events with it. The patient usually experiences joint stiffness after inactivity. Morning stiffness can last 60 minutes to several hours more. The clinical manifestations of the joints. Um, as the disease progresses, inflammation and fibrosis of the joint capsule may cause deformity and disability. This is a very important slide right here. I want you guys to review it. Um, typical deformities of the rheumatoid arthritis. They, we talked about the ulnar drift. And um, on A, the, now your finger goes off like that. And B, how you can't put your fingers down flat. C, right here with your foot and the swan neck deformity. This is a really important slide with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, here's some manifestations of arthritis and how it affects nearly every system in our body. And the diagnosis is made on history and physical findings. 80% um, of adults uh, can get um, a titus rise right here on the top part of it, the testing is important. The synovial fluid in the early disease can show a slightly cloudy straw colored fluid. Um, Interprofessional care, patient teaching is a drug therapy disease processes, home management strategy. Um, drugs are the cornerstone for the treatment because of irreversible joint changes. Um, as, far, as far, early as the first year, they aggressively prescribe disease modifying um, drugs called DMARDSs. They slow the progression of the disease. The choice of the drug is based on the disease activity. Other meds used infrequently are antibiotics. They kind of just treat the symptoms that's going on. Immunosuppressants, um, corticosteroid can be managed, um, can be used to manage the symptoms like a the disease flare-ups. depends on everybody has the different symptoms with it. Um, they can use NSAIDs for anti-inflammatory and pain. Like um, nutrition is very important and they need a balanced nutrition. 
Now, special diet is needed, but balanced nutrition is very important. Fatigue, pain, and depression can cause a loss of appetite. In addition, uh, limited endurance and mobility may interfere with their ability to shop and, and prepare their own food. Surgical therapy um, is done when they have to relieve severe pain or, or function, like a total joint replacement or something. And once in a while, we, as you guys get on into nursing, maybe you'll, maybe you'll look up and um, remember um, Florence Nightingale. Sometimes you'll see this on t-shirts and papers, like what would Florence do? <laughs> it's just kind of reminding you, stop and think for a minute. Now, what would Florence do? Or what would you do? You know, what are you going to do about your patient or like we've been talking about, and you guys have been doing very well learning and prioritizing care. Anyway, that's just for a break slide anyway. Okay, nursing assessment, of course, the subjective data, we've learned how to do that, and then getting their uh, objective data and their past their medicine and their past history is really important. We've learned out that some people are very good um, historians and some people are very poor historians. This is just a bunch of more information about um, rheumatoid arthritis. Objective data things are you can see are joint involvement. Some people have swelling, joint enlargement. X-rays can show some um, deformities on the X-ray, some of it. Nursing diagnosis are usually like with impaired mobility or pain, of course, pain, disturbed body image to some people. Um, overall goals, the main, the main goal is to keep them able to move as much as they can, like this minimal loss of functional ability is very important. Prevention is not always possible. Early treatment will help prevent further um, joint damage. The primary goals in management are to help the pain, of course, decrease inflammation and maintain their joint, the function of their joints. And goals can include, um, you know, a balance, teaching them to rest and be active. You know, when they're, when they're too long without moving, they get very, very stiff in their joints. And this is just some more um, ideas for um, interventions with your patient if they've got rheumatoid arthritis. Um, plan care around morning stiffness. In the mornings, they'll be very stiff. To relieve the joint stiffness, you can um, have them take a warm shower or put their hands in some warm water and put, uh, plan the care and procedures around their morning stiffness, kind of give them some time to rest in between time. They do have to have really good rest. <clears throat> and alternating their rest with activity helps relieve the fatigue and the pain. Trying to get them on a good schedule keeping their body aligned when they're sleeping or when they're laying down with um, a small flat pillow under their head and shoulders. Um, encourage positions of extension when they're stretching out the most. <clears throat> moist heat, heat pads, moist hot packs, and don't, <clears throat> don't exceed 20 minutes at a time. This is what I was talking about, like I'll leave them 20 minutes at a time. I'm kind of confused you a little bit for the, that time period, but like in an emergency situation, we can put ice packs on, leave it on until we get them uh, transferred to surgery or whatever, but this is like when you're just trying to help somebody with their um, uncomfortableness or their pain, leave it on for 20 minutes at a time and take it back off, kind of help them move, kind of help them um, move around as much as they can, uh, gentle range of motion exercises, <clears throat> psychological support, really getting them involved sure makes them feel a lot better. I find that over and over again, even if they are pretty grouchy and, and they have a hopeless idea at first. They're constantly challenged by their fatigue um, and they're hurting. And you can discuss things with them and um, talk to them about their fears and their talk to them about what we're gonna do, our ideas to help with their pain. And then they can tell us what help works and what doesn't work with their pain. The effects of the body, it's got, this is, a, I like this picture, it's got brain fog, they can have the, the dry eyes, dry mouth, it's got all the different uh, things that can help happen with to their body. This just shows by the numbers, um, 40 to 60, usually when they're diagnosed, 70% <clears throat> of the people are women. 50% um, of it go on to have some heart disease. This is just some added um, information. I put that for your reading pleasure. <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> musculoskeletal conditions are typically characterized by pain, limitations in mobility. They include conditions that affect our joints. And here's your review slide um, about the ulnar drift and 
um, all of these can track different things that happen with rheumatoid arthritis that are really important. And then now you can take a break, whether you want one or not. You probably, probably want one. Okay. Um, osteoarthritis. Slowly progressive non-inflammatory disorder of the synovial joint. It's not a normal part of aging. Aging is one risk factor. Most adults are affected by the age of 40. The people that develop it in their hands are more likely to develop it in their knees as well. Um, manifests like joint pain is the main symptom. In the early stages, joint pain is relieved by rest. However, they may have to have trouble sleeping as they get more into more pain. Uh, this uh, called called decrepit, but we call it crepitus a lot. A crepitation, a grating sensation caused by loose cartilage. Um, crepitus is common in people with uh, knee, knees that have osteoarthritis in their knees. Deformities or instability associated with um, osteoarthritis. <clears throat> I put um, a picture of this, these uh, joints, the VIP joints and the PIP joints. And uh, I, I put the explanations out here for you. The diagnosis and care for osteoarthritis, um, the diagnostic part, we've been talking about that for our care plans, a bone scan, a CT scan, or an MRI helps diagnose OA. Um, these tests can detect early joint changes. There's no lab test really to use um, to diagnose it. So that's in, a, in osteoarthritis, the fluid is usually clear yellow from the synovial fluid. And the health promotion and the prevention is the best in most cases. They're treated as outpatients when they have it. Um, they can be, they use uh, drugs or for pain, uh, non-drug strategies or pain and disability. They can be on NSAIDs if they can take them. We try to get them to get enough rest and, re and retain their joint <coughs> flexion and muscle strength. And then I let you have a little break there. Take a big old stretch, big cleansing breath. Isn't that a pretty picture? I wish I was living right there, right now. Okay, on to something interesting like gout. Gout is a type of arthritis characterized by an elevation in uric acid. Um, I hope y'all have never had gout. Guess when I got gout? One time in my whole life. Guess when? In nursing school, in 1982, in the middle of nursing school at Carl Albert Junior College. Then, it wasn't State College then, and it, it was in my big toe. And I needed to wear my open shoes, but I could not because we had to go to clinical. Anyway, um, the nursing interventions for the acute gout include supportive care. Um, the dietary restrictions limit alcohol and food high in purine. And here's an example of that. You encourage people to stay well hydrated. And if the, uh, the obese patients are going to go on a diet, they don't want them to fast. So this is important. Um, gout is important to re review and how to care for it. And there's a picture of my toe. No, but my toe did look like that. I'm just telling you guys. If anybody wants to talk about my toe at some point, we, we can. The following are indications that a person is experiencing gout attack. Um, intense joint pain, um, difficulty moving. You can take uh, NSAID, you can elevate your foot and put some ice on it. You can avoid alcohol and sugary drinks. Um, open to open toe shoes and sandals feel the best because you can't hardly stand anything else. So anyway, so you need to know that about gout, how it just comes along quickly and how um, acute gout is treated and how you can, what you teach your patient about gout. And you're only abnormal. The gold standard is uh, that you can the gold standard way to know if somebody has gout is they can draw synovial fluid, but they don't hardly ever do that. The only abnormal lab that people have with diagnosis of gout is elevated uric acid. So they'll check their labs and if they have elevated uric acid and a swollen toe, they can diagnose them pretty easy. So the only abnormal lab is elevated uric acid. And again, that's how my toe works. Okay, the fall, and here's a picture just to review this about the severe pain and swelling. They can put some ice on it and drink some fluid, water, flush your system out. Okay, Scler scleroderma is a disorder of connective tissue. Your body makes too much collagen. It's, com it's common in all groups, but the most common in Black, Native American, or Japanese descent. 
it's often marked by the Crest syndrome, and that's on your in your book, page 1523. There's no specific treatment. I put the table there. You teach people to take regular part in therapeutic exercises at home to prevent skin retraction, like yawning with an open mouth. It's a very good exercise for these people. If they don't keep take a part in their therapeutic exercises, it can get where they can't, where they can't um, move their mouth like that. And encourage the use of moist heat so they can have flexibility. Um, discourage these people um, from smoking because um, you don't want them to discourage them from ice. Too ice is discouraged because it causes vasoconstriction constriction of their blood vessels and they have slower healing. So they need to keep their hands and feet from cold exposure. They need to um, use moist heat and keep their skin flexible. So be sure and review scleroderma. And this SJOGREN syndrome, I don't know how to put those two little dots over that J, but it's a common autoimmune disease that targets the moisture producing exoglans. This leads to dry mouth, dry eyes, your nose and throat and airway and skin can become dry. It's diagnosed in people over the age of 40, usually. The lymphocytes attack and damage our lacrimal and salivary glands. So we have decreased hearing causes dry eyes, leads to a gritty, gritty sensation in your eyes. The treatment is symptomatic and you can use artificial tears. You can um, have increased fluids with your meal. You can have humidity, increased humidity at home. That humidity helps reduce um, respiratory tract infections. So that is a really good slide to remember and review too. And then we have fibromyalgia, a, a chronic central pain syndrome marked by widespread muscular pain and fatigue, multiple tender points. The patient re reports a widespread burning pain. Come in. There's, ten, there's two tables in your book, 521527. 1527 is the tender point table and common features of fibromyalgia. Uh, the definite diagnosis is hard to establish. Treatment is symptomatic and requires a high level of patient motivation. Teach your patient to be an active participant in their treatment. Rest can help them with the pain and aching. Drug therapy includes Lyrica and Cymbalta. Patients can, can, may consider limiting their intake of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, because these are muscle irritants. So that's important to teach them. Low impact exercise, such as walking, can prevent muscle atrophy. All right, now we are going to talk about Lyme's disease. See, I got a picture for you and everything. <laughs> I knew you'd love that. <laughs> Michaela, are you making a face at me? You better not. <clears throat> okay, Lyme's disease, for real, is an infection caused by uh, a spiral cat, whatever, identified in 1975, Lyme, Connecticut. Um, it is transmitted by the bite of an infected tear, tear, a deer tick. The tick typically feeds on mice, dogs, cats, cows, horses, deer, and humans. The most characteristic uh, symptom is erythema migraine. So the bullseye rash occurs in 80% of people. It begins as a central red macule or patchule and expands up to like, it can get up to 12 inches resembling a bullseye. It can be warm, but not itchy or painful. The rash often occurs with acute flu-like symptoms, a low-grade fever, headache, fatigue, loss of appetite, and muscle pain. The treatment and um, reducing exposure to ticks is the best way to prevent Lyme disease. They said there's no vaccine available. You uh, kind of treat it like with what's going on. Some, some people get oral antibiotics. A small number of people are treated with antibiotics still may have a lingering of fatigue or joint or muscle pain. Got you some cool pictures there for your entertainment pleasure. Okay, lupus. <clears throat> systemic uh, SLE is a um, multi-system inflammatory autoimmune disease. It's complex. It typically affects the skin, the joints, the serous membranes, and your pleura, pleura your pericardium, your renal, hematolo hematologic, neurologic systems are also affected. <clears throat> it's marked by chronic unpredictable course, with alternating periods of remission and exacerbation. It can affect anyone. 90% are women, 15 to 45. The cause is unknown based on the high prevalence among family members, genetic is suspected. Hormones are known to play a part. Environmental um, factors are thought to play a part. Um, clinical manifestations and complications the most commonly involved tissues are the skin, the muscle, the lungs, the heart, the nervous tissue, and the kidneys. The classic butterfly rash over the cheeks and bridge of the nose occur in about half of the people, patients that have it. 
arthritis occurs in many of the people that have it. Cardiac involvement can, will, can include a dysrhythmias due to fibrosis of the SA and the AV nodes. When there's cardiac involvement, it shows that that disease is really advanced. Um, and that is the leading cause of death with people that have SLEs, cardiac problems. 40% develop uh, with SLE develop kidney problems that need medical evaluation and treatment. So renal involvement is usually present within the first five years. So these people first start having protein in their urine and then that rapidly gets worse and worse and progresses to glomerulonephritis. So if you're watching somebody with lupus, you watch for their, that look on their, uh, their rash on their face and then you check their urine out to see if they have um, a protein in it as it will get worse and worse. Diagnosis of lupus is based on a distinct criteria and there's no specific lab test for it. Um, it's marked by the presence of ANA, 97% of the people have it. NSAIDs continue to be an important intervention. Um, anti, they use anti-malaria agents often to treat fatigue and skin and joint problems because these, these drugs repress their immune system but do not cause immunosuppression. And there's also some good tables for you to look at in Lewis. I've got the page numbers there for you. Raynaud's phenomenon is a, the most common complaint in the scleroderma. They have decreased blood flow to their fingers and toes. Um, I really appreciated uh, the picture that one of my students sent me of their, themselves. I didn't know if that would be okay to put on the slide. So I decided not to make you a star yet without asking you, <laughs> but I appreciate the picture. That's awful. I hope that, I hope you don't, aren't really uncomfortable a lot, especially in this cold weather. Um, numbness and tingling often occur. Raynaud's phenomenon can precede the onset of uh, the systemic disease by months, years, or even decades. And we made it to the end. Relax, review off and on till Friday. I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to do fantastic. Um, so we covered we covered um, what we can do to help people with um, scleroderma, and when they need to. Uh, exercise, we can en encourage them. We give them supportive care of whatever's the matter and we keep them, try to keep them moving, like do, doing some exercises as they can, like the yawning. We use moist heat um, and we try to keep um, with that, um, with that disease with the little dots. Let's see, I can't say it right. I'll have to show it to you. That SJ. Um, not the gout, not the scleroderma. That one, the syndrome here. We be sure um, it keeps everything so dry that you can have them run a humidifier and keep it moist in their house, and that will help them have a more moist air. Um, and that helps them, you can, they can use artificial tears. They can, you can encourage them to take sips of fluid throughout the day. Um, we have a lot to drink. And one of the drugs they use, they use, um, they just treat it symptomatically, um, of course, but one of the drugs they do say that works well with some of these people is that Restasis. Uh, it's often prescribed for this syndrome. And we talked about the foods that, um, be sure and be able to teach somebody about gout. And of course, your favorite slide of all, Lyme disease. Um, when someone has lupus, the things we watch for is their, uh, the butterfly rash on their face. We also, 40% uh, of them have kidney problems. So we watch their urine to see if it's starting to show any protein in it or not. And then, because that can continue to get worse and lead to very bad uh, kidney problems. Um, on the osteoarthritis, some people can get uh, can not get it with prevention activities, and so they talked about things that you can do as far as teaching them, and y'all y'all can review that things that um, are modifiable risk factors. And I told you guys things that have changed a lot in your world. I mean, used to like the sex of our, our sex, who we are, female or male, was not changeable, and now I guess it is for you guys. But <laughs> modifiable risk factors, you know, like. Uh, age we can't change our age gender supposedly we can't change our gender we're going to go with that um genetics we can't change our genetics part of us can change our weight weight is a modifiable risk factor if we can do it 
And um, so review things like that, you're teaching with that. And um, on your, the guy with the gout, be sure and talk to him about his diet. And the only the lab thing that shows up on him is the uric acid. So um, anyway, just review. And if you've got any questions about anything or you think I left anything out or confused you even more, you sure let me know. And I will, guys, will, I will see you soon if we're not getting to play in the snow. I don't know. I've been in, in this office since, since this morning at 7. It's 5 o'clock. I'm fixing to call it a day. So I'll talk to you guys soon.